When I was around 8 or 9 years old, there was this prank I did on my parents' and grandparents' computers. This involved creating a shutdown shortcut in Windows and then changing the icon, name and comment to that of a common program like Internet Explorer, back when people actually used that browser. Now this prank was simple and fairly harmless, and while it was funny at first, the novelty of the prank wore off kinda quickly. Now since I had a bit of extra free time today and I was kinda bored, I decided to make something similar to this but a bit more exciting. I call this Sillyware XP, the world's silliest piece of malware. I don't even know if I can call it malware because it doesn't do anything to harm the operating system, it's just very annoying. And it's on par with the kind of programs featured in the trash malware videos posted by Enderman and some smaller creators like Come on Windows. Well let's fire this Windows XP VM up and log into my user account named Ben Dover because yes that is my real name. Totally. Then we'll click on this not so suspicious Internet Explorer icon and I'll know the computer's restarting. How exciting. Except not really. Now when you restart, you'll see we have a brand new user account called Yuri Nate, and this account also has a randomly generated password. And the password isn't logged into a file or anything, so unless you're god or incredibly lucky, the only way of getting in here is by resetting it. Now let's log back into the Bendover account, and you'll be greeted with another restart counter, except we've gone from a 12 second wait to a 30 second wait. We've also got a bunch of fake error messages, and some of them include mildly amusing dad jokes that occasionally make you breathe out your nostril. After the computer restarts, you'll see we have another account, Rob Banks. Every time you log on, a new user account will be created with a silly name. And just like the other account, this has a randomly generated password. Another thing, if you try logging off immediately after logging in, the computer will restart anyway. And what's worse is the computer will wait for the timer to run out before actually restarting. So if I set this timer to 5 minutes instead of 30 seconds, well that's a lot of waiting, and the quickest way to shut down would be to force it off by disconnecting the power. Now we're restarting, and oh look, we have another user, Anita Sheet. And if we log in again, the same thing will happen. It is possible to stop this code from executing, but you have to be quick because you only have a 30 second grace period between logging in and restarting. So here I'm setting a password for the administrator account and then disabling the welcome screen because the administrator account isn't shown on the welcome screen by default. So now if we let the computer restart, we can log in as the administrator and then delete the content of the startup folder. And yes, it's these files that were causing all this mess. So yeah, this is just a silly program I made out of boredom. There is another program I made a few years ago called Coronaware, which actually had two versions. One that was just visual eye candy, and one that would actually break your system. Unfortunately I lost the source code for the program, but if you'd like me to talk about Coronaware and the lore behind it, let me know in the comments below. As for now, thank you for watching, and until next time, cheerio.